Unfortunately, more big storms are going to be coming to the United States as we go into next week, and these storms are going to pose a threat for some significant severe weather, which begins Sunday and will likely run at least through Wednesday of next week. Now, with all that being said, we also have some storms that are going to be happening between now and Saturday that will also bring some severe weather. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down everything that you need to know about the severe weather event for the next couple of days, and then what's ahead for next week as we are likely going to see multiple large storms with many days of severe weather. So we're going to begin first with what's happening right now, which will lead to severe weather today and tomorrow, and then we'll dive more into what's expected next week. And right now we do have some showers and thunderstorms anywhere from Texas back into areas like Alabama and Georgia. This activity that you're seeing here over Alabama and Georgia is the weakening mesoscale convective system that we had last night that brought significant damage to areas like Houston, Texas. Many areas had wind blown out we had trees knocked down there was just a ton of damage yesterday in the houston texas area all that storm activity has moved east and it is really just producing at this point minimal severe weather activity we also have another area that we're watching back over near louisiana and texas that is going to try to pose a similar threat as we go later into the afternoon and into the evening tonight that'll pose another risk for some damaging winds maybe a little bit of isolated hail and maybe even a couple of tornadoes so that'll also be something to watch for back over in the northeast things are relatively quiet overall there's a lot of cloud cover and humid but overall there's really not a whole lot of storm activity there and then the great plains looking nice for the most part if you're in the midwest northern central or even southern plains things should stay relatively quiet at least through saturday until we start to see that massive area of storms developing as we go into sunday and even into early next week that could pose some severe weather and then also on the west coast things are relatively dry and as well as quiet right now before the rest of today, we are watching two different areas of severe weather. The first of which will be in the northern plains with isolated hail and damaging winds. And then the second area is right along the Gulf Coast where we're still watching for some damaging winds and maybe even an isolated tornado or two. Here's that wind threat, which once again, really confined there to the Gulf Coast. Your hail threat overall relatively low. The maximum hailstone size will be around maybe ping pong balls. That's really about it. And then also the tornado risk is slightly more elevated from about Mississippi back into Georgia. That's primarily for the MCS that we're seeing now, but we also could see some storms even this evening, posing at least a very low tornado risk right along the immediate Gulf Coast. Now, tomorrow, things get a little bit more interesting, but relatively still quiet. I don't think we're going to see anything too major tomorrow. Two different areas that we're watching for, one of which will be in the Midwest with more isolated wind and hail, and the second of which will be in the Southeast, and actually parts of South Carolina and North Carolina, which is where I'm golfing right now, is actually included in a slight risk for severe weather. So we might even do a little localized storm chase, maybe get the golf cart out, go a little bit a little bit of storm chasing there in South Carolina. Otherwise, though, really overall tomorrow is going to be another uh, relatively minimal day when it comes to severe weather from Florida into North Carolina. The main concern is going to be wind and some isolated hail. There might also be a couple of tornadoes, and that could be anywhere from uh, southern North Carolina back into even eastern Louisiana. That's going to be out of the remaining mesoscale convective system that will again develop tonight, posing a threat for some damaging winds. So what does this all look like on the future radar? Well, let's go ahead and begin with what's happening now. We still have showers and thunderstorms stretching from southwest Georgia back into southern Alabama. Main concern with that activity is wind, maybe again an isolated brief tornado at some point throughout the afternoon. Once we go into this evening, storms continue to march eastbound. Notice the storms moving into areas like Florida and southern Georgia where that activity will be weakening overall. Once we get closer to midnight or so, though, we'll have another MCS attempting to develop back over in Louisiana and this is going to be the one that's going to pose a very low trade risk overnight tonight and by tomorrow morning this will be posing a threat right along the Florida uh, Panhandle and back into southern Georgia with mainly a threat for damaging winds but we could even get a couple of spin-up tornadoes and then once we get closer to lunchtime those storms are moving right into South Carolina and then as we go into the afternoon hours they'll push off to the east and northeast with some scattered showers and thunderstorms across parts of South Carolina Alabama Georgia and Tennessee where the main concern will just be isolated hail and wind. Overall, relatively low risk. It's your typical springtime thunderstorms that'll be happening there during the afternoon and evening. And as we go into the overnight hours, things really dry out for most of the southeast, so things will be a bit quieter there. Now, once we go beyond Saturday, we are going to have a completely different weather pattern that's going to bring multiple big storms, and we are going to see multiple big days of severe weather. Now, Sunday is going to be the first of many days of severe weather for this new weather pattern. And the first one is not looking too 
too, too concerning. We do have a slight risk for Nebraska and Kansas, where we could even get some photogenic supercells that produce hail, wind, and maybe a couple of tornadoes. It's a relatively low risk. I'm not super concerned right now about Sunday. My concern grows just a little bit once we get closer to Monday, though. Uh, we are going to have another slight risk basically in the same area. And if we do get a, be a bit better of a weather pattern, this could actually be a little bit more of a significant day for severe weather. But overall, still looks similar to Sunday, but maybe just a little bit bigger of a threat as we go into Monday. Tuesday, though, looks like the biggest day for severe weather, where we have a large slight risk of severe weather from western Michigan all the way back down into Oklahoma, where the threat for significant damaging winds, significant hail, and even potentially a few tornadoes with a couple of strong tornadoes being possible will all be in play as we go into Tuesday. Now, overall, this is still relatively uncertain exactly when these storms will happen and how significant they'll be and where the most significant severe weather is going to reside, but it does look like Tuesday right now is going to be one of the bigger days for severe weather. Also, I did want to show you the machine-based learning program that is going to basically give us an idea of where the greatest risk for severe weather will be. It's similar to the Storm Prediction Center, but this is more of just a you know computer-based learning program. It's not an actual human making the forecast. And you'll notice the computer-based program is actually showing the greatest risk on Monday across areas in southeast Nebraska with a more generalized slight risk, which will go from Colorado back into Iowa. Now, as we go into Tuesday, it shows us a much more substantial threat for severe weather which this has been quite accurate so far this season. So this is something that I do think will probably get upgraded at some point down the road. I think that slight risk will at least get upgraded to an enhanced risk in many areas from Illinois back into Missouri. But the thing is, the confidence level just isn't there yet for that to actually be issued. It also shows much higher threats of severe weather, even in areas like northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin. But once again, we are still several days out and things could definitely change. And a day that we don't have an outlook for right now, but we probably will have one at some point here in the near future is for Wednesday, which is Wacky Weather Wednesday. And notice we have a large slight and even a small um, enhanced risk that this computer model is basically showing us. So again, overall, that's kind of what we're looking at for the next few days in terms of the main threat and where the greatest risk will be. But I did want to show you at least a side-by-side -side comparison, give you an idea of what the computer models are essentially showing versus the Storm Prediction Center, which obviously, again, there is still a lot of uncertainty. So these risks obviously are not upgraded right now, but they could be in the near future. Here's a more in-depth dive of the jet stream, which gives us an idea of the weather patterns that are happening across the United States. And we've again had a lot of activity down here in the southeast over the last several days. And the jet stream continues to stay actually a little bit on the stronger side of things down there, as we've had multiple different disturbances rolling across the southeast. Things will dry out, though, on the later half of the weekend. And by early next week, we are going to be dealing with, again, a new weather pattern, which is going to basically reside back up here in the central and northern plains, back over into the western tier of the country where we're going to be watching for multiple different troughs to essentially come off of this very strong jet stream right across the northern and central plains. And this is going to probably spew at least a few different low pressure systems that will eject over the Rocky Mountains. And this will eventually lead to a threat of severe weather. Now, specifically for Tuesday, which looks to be the more significant day, we are going to have a strong southwesterly flow in the jet stream, which is in the upper levels. Here's your low pressure system back over to the northwest. Depending on the timing of this, this could be relatively significant but there's still a lot of uncertainty regarding the timing and as well as how humid it is. Basically, the ingredients that we need for severe weather, there's still a relatively high amount of uncertainty there. But if we do that, get this trough ejection, it is more than likely going to be a negatively tilted trough, which would elevate the threat there even for tornadoes and damaging winds, especially there in the Midwest. And even going into Wednesday, we could see another threat for severe weather try to evolve in the Ohio Valley and perhaps even the uh, eastern side of the Midwest, including parts of Illinois. By the time we go into Thursday and Friday, things will stay pretty active still across the northern tier and even the central tier of the country, where more of these troughs will continue to pose a risk for at least showers and thunderstorms and perhaps even some severe weather as we go into the later half of next week. And then after that, things become relatively uncertain. Now, as we go into Tuesday, there's going to be a lot of moisture. Notice that surge of moisture out of the Gulf of Mexico by the time we go into the afternoon hours on Tuesday. Look at these dew points up into the low 70s, even into eastern 
eastern Kansas and almost the entire Midwest will have dew points in the mid to upper 60s in some areas near 70. That is a very buoyant atmosphere which is going to lead to more severe weather and notice this as we go into the late evening and even into the overnight hours that surge of showers and thunderstorms would roll into areas like the Chicago suburbs and as well as even near Milwaukee but again the uncertainty still remains on timing and how significant the severe weather is and also if we actually see severe weather in these areas like how widespread will it be or will it be more isolated all of those details still remain relatively uncertain at this time the last thing I'm going to show you is the future radar beyond today again the weekend looks relatively dry across the southern plains we're going to be dealing with showers and thunderstorms as we go into Sunday we even could get a few tornadoes or at least a couple of tornadoes from Nebraska back into Kansas on Sunday some photogenic storms for sure for those that are storm chasers by the time we go into Monday more of those storms will try to erupt there in Nebraska and Kansas where hail wind and maybe again a couple tornadoes being possible by Tuesday we're likely going to get a much more organized threat for severe weather with a much stronger low pressure system and this will have a much better initiator and overall these storms should be moving much faster than the ones that are going to be happening on Sunday and Monday so that'll impact areas from Oklahoma Missouri and even Kansas back into Iowa by the time we go into late Tuesday into Wednesday those move into the Midwest and eventually the Ohio Valley will have a chance for probably some showers and thunderstorms on Wednesday with a little bit more severe weather being a possibility and then by Thursday and Friday things become relatively uncertain but we will likely still have multiple rounds of severe weather anywhere between essentially Sunday all the way through about May 30th or so so it's gonna be very active make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and we'll be keeping you posted with the latest as we get closer to these severe weather events